In this video today, I'm going to be taking two of the most popular books about habits and pitting them against each other to help you decide which one is best for you. The two books I'm comparing today are Atomic Habits by James Clear and Good Habits, Bad Habits by Professor Wendy Wood. We're going to be judging them on three different categories. The first one is readability. How enjoyable is it to read these books? Number two is scientific rigor. How good is the quality of the science that was being cited in these books? And number three is, is the information in these books useful to you and helping you build new habits. Now I should say up front that I probably am a bit biased because Professor Wood is a friend of mine and she has been on the channel a few times before but because I'm aware of that bias and I can anticipate it I'm going to try and fight against my own bias and give each of these books as fair an assessment as possible. Okay so the first category is readability. How enjoyable is each of these books to read? Let's start with Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits is a very well written book. James Clear's experience as a blogger and a writer in the past really shines through in his book and it does make for a very enjoyable read from start to finish. Two things that I really appreciate about James Clear's writing. Number one is that the book is quite short. It'll only take you maybe like five to six hours to get through it all. And the second is that he talks a lot about his personal experience with trying to build habits. He is somebody who, like me, is a bit of a habits nerd. He's been trying to build habits for many, many years. And what I really like about his writings is that he talks about his own struggles, his own failings in trying to build habits before explaining what he changed and why. I think this personal touch that he adds to his writing really makes for engaging reading and really helps draw you into the points that he's trying to make. So for that reason, I think Atomic Habits reads extremely well. That being said though, I do think that Good Habits, Bad Habits is also a very well-written book. It's so well-written in fact that I happily read the book maybe four times cover to cover and never once did I feel like the book was dragging at any point during that entire reading process. What's most impressive to me about Professor Wood's writing is her ability to distill so much research into a very, very simple explanation in a way that's almost idiotic proof that anybody who's reading this book, no matter your background in psychology or in habit science, can clearly and easily understand what she's talking about and how it's applicable to your own life. For me, it reminds me of a quote by Einstein, which is, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. And while Professor Wood understands it better than probably anybody else in the entire world, and so her explanations are extremely simple, yet still very scientifically accurate. Which nicely brings me on to the next category, which is scientific accuracy. When it comes to scientific accuracy, I think that James Clear does a pretty good job in getting most of the big things right. Things like not relying on willpower to build your habits, or making sure that your new habit is rewarded immediately, and also the emphasis on your social interactions and how your daily social environment plays such a huge role in shaping your habits. I think James Clear talks about these things in a very good way and explains them very clearly. I was also really happy and surprised to see some of the more advanced techniques from habit science making its way into atomic habits. Things like habit stacking, the idea that you can use an existing habit as a context cue to trigger a new habit. I think he talks about that in a very good way and explains it very clearly and that is something from the scientific literature which has shown to help people build new habits faster. He also talks about something called implementation intentions. Implementation intentions is the idea that basically you should make a very simple plan about how you're going to carry out your new behavior and and by doing so, you're much more likely to follow through. I think he explains that very well, and that is something which has been shown to work in behavioral science. So for all of those concepts, I think that James Clear has done a really good job in explaining them in a way that is scientifically accurate. However, there are some other things that he says in the book that I don't really agree with, and I think that a lot of habit researchers would also not agree with. For example, I think he places too strong an emphasis on the role of identity in habits. While identity and habits are certainly linked in some way, I think he does overstate many of the claims on how important identity is when it comes to habit formation. For example, one of the quotes in the book is, the reason why we fail at our habits is because our identity is in the way. I just think that this is too big an overstatement and there isn't a lot of research to back that claim up. Most of the research we see on why people fail at their habits is usually because their environment isn't setting them up for success. There's too much friction in their environment, it's too difficult for them to do the thing that they're trying to do every day and so that's the main reason why people don't follow through on their habits. Or maybe it's because they're in an unstable context, you know, they're moving house a lot, maybe their work relies them to have, you know, very inconsistent hours. This kind of instability on a day-to-day -day basis means that it makes it very difficult for people people to develop consistent habits. And so the idea that identity is like the biggest barrier to building new habits, I don't think is a accurate statement. Another quote from the book is, the process of behavior change always starts with awareness. Quite simply, 
this just isn't the case. My job as a behavioral science consultant is to understand how behavior change works. And while a lot of behavior change happens outside of conscious awareness, you know, the forces in our environment push us, nudge us towards making certain decisions. And a lot of that happens outside of our conscious awareness. And so our behavior can change without us even realizing it a lot of the time. And so, you know, this statement just simply is false. And in general, I think the book places too much emphasis on the idea of cognitive strategies, that the idea that you can basically just think your way into having better better habits and that really goes against the whole kind of philosophy and understanding of how we know habits work that trying to think of your way out of changing your habits doesn't really work that well. He makes statements like, oh, if you say that rather than I have to do something, you can say I get to do it and this will like completely transform your behavior. I don't really think that's accurate. There's not really any data to back that up. That's just his own opinion. And well, from my understanding of how habits work, that probably wouldn't actually completely change your behavior. In fact, um, it probably wouldn't do that much at all because the forces in your environment are exactly the same. So it might get you to do something maybe like once or twice, but if you're talking about building new habits and building things that are going to be you know, repeated again and again and again, then you don't really wanna be using these kind of cognitive strategies. You wanna be doing something which is more environment focused. So in summary, I'd say Atomic Habits gets most of those big things right and some of the small things too, but there are quite a few things in there where I'm reading it and I'm just thinking like, yeah, I don't think that's right, mate. Okay, let's move on to good habits, bad habits. So when it comes to scientific accuracy, unsurprisingly, Professor Wendy Wood's book is extremely scientifically accurate because, well, she's the world's leading expert on the science of habits. Good habits, bad habits is absolutely packed to the brim with good quality scientific research, a lot of which was done by Professor Wood herself, which makes a lot of sense because while well, she spent almost her entire long career researching habits, the way they work and how they interact with our lives. In fact, she's the one who did a lot of that seminal research that's really laid the foundation for how we understand habits and psychology today. What that means for you as a reader reading Good Habits, Bad Habits is that you're getting the knowledge about habit science directly from the source itself, rather than getting it secondhand from someone like James Clear or indeed myself as people who didn't actually do the research ourselves. Instead, you're getting it from the person who was there designing the papers, getting the research, doing, processing the data, and therefore you're getting the most accurate interpretation of that research because it's Professor Wood who actually did it. It's this depth and breadth of knowledge about habit science that I think makes the extra length of good habits, bad habits totally justified because Professor Wood isn't just explaining the same thing as James Clear, but in a less succinct way. Instead, she's using those extra pages to talk about whole topics that are not even touched on in Atomic Habits. Things like habit discontinuity, my favorite topic in all of habit science. This idea that when we go through times of great environmental change, like for example, moving house, it makes building new habits much, much easier easier. This is a key topic which is talked about a lot in the scientific research and has a lot of research done about it and yet is completely not touched on by James Clear and Atomic Habits which was something which was very surprising to me. And finally let's move on to usefulness. Right off the bat I think that both of these books are really useful. If you're someone who has no idea how to build new habits, you haven't heard about any of these ideas before, then I think you do well to read either of them and I think they'll both be very useful to you in helping you build new habits. However if I have to say which one I think is more useful than the other, then I have to give the credit to good habits, bad habits. The reason being that it just simply has more stuff in it. There's more tips, there's more research, there's more things that you can draw upon to help you build your own habits than you have in atomic habits. I'll also say that because it's more scientifically accurate by nature, that also makes it more useful because you're less likely to try something from the book and it not working out in your own life. You're basically trying something out which has been tested more rigorously than some of the things that are being talked about in James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. And so for those reasons, I think that Good Habits, Bad Habits just ekes out Atomic Habits a little. But like I said, I think they'd both serve you well if you're just trying to build a new habit. Okay, so it's time to give each of these books a rating out of five. I'm going to give Atomic Habits a really strong four out of five. I think it deserves a four out of five because, you know, it's extremely well written. James Clear is an excellent author. And so the book is, you know, very easy to read. I also think that he gets a lot of the big things about habits correct and a few of the small things as well. And so for that reason, he gets a pretty good score for the scientific accuracy. But but, you know, docking one point because there are a few things in there which I don't agree with and I think he overstates a few different elements. But that being said, I do think that Atomic Habits is a really useful book and if you're someone trying to build new habits, you would be more likely to be successful if you do read Atomic Habits. That being said though, I'm gonna give Good Habits, Bad Habits an even stronger five out of five, full marks from me. You know, it's just so packed with great quality scientific research and loads of tips about how to build habits. You know, so many different uh, aspects of how habits interact with different parts of our lives. And also, 
also it's just a really enjoyable read. You know, like I said, Professor Wood does a great job at explaining all of these pretty complicated topics in a way that's so simple and easy for anyone to understand. And so for that reason, I'm gonna give Good Habits, Bad Habits five out of five. So that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's review of Atomic Habits versus Good Habits, Bad Habits. If you did, could you please give me a thumbs up because it really helps me out. If you wanna learn more about habits, I have lots of videos about habits. I might wanna recommend this one, which is about habit discontinuity, which I talked about earlier, which is called How to Build New Habits Fast. If you wanna learn about that, go check out that video. But otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.